Welcome back to the Crypto Bar channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, Bitcoin is bouncing from critical support while Ethereum is getting very close to a potential breakout. And on top of that, we have some major crypto news to do with the resignation of the CEO of Binance, exactly how much money has flown out of Binance over the last one day, and what all of this has to do with the BlackRock Spot Bitcoin ETF. So I'll be talking about all of that and more in just a moment. Definitely stick around. First of all, we need to talk about the Binance news because, of course, this news just broke over the last one day. And I know this news has already been out over the last one day, but I did cover it in real time over on my Twitter. So if you want a real time update, make sure you follow me over there. Link down below in the description and in the pinned comments. But basically, this news broke as soon as I posted my last video on the channel, as soon as I was working on my last video yesterday. And so I couldn't really include this news in my last video. But basically, CZ, the CEO, of Binance or Binance. Binance the world's largest virtual currency exchange, has essentially stepped down from the role of CEO. So that is right, CZ is no longer running Beyonce as the CEO. And I won't be reading this entire tweet in this video because it's quite a long tweet by CZ. And so if you want to check that out, it's over on his Twitter. But basically in this tweet, he does announce a new CEO for Beyonce, which is Richard Tang. And I will be talking more about that in just a moment. But first, of course, quickly mentioning that CZ is pleading guilty to violating AML requirements, so anti-money laundering requirements. And so without going into too much detail about that in this video, basically, allegedly, there was money laundering happening on Binance. And that can potentially count as simply having no KYC for certain users over on Binance. And of course, when Binance first started years ago, there was no KYC near the beginning. And of course, back then, in around 2017, 2018, there was really no requirements at all to have KYC on crypto exchanges. There was basically no crypto regulation at all. And so essentially the US government is getting Binance and CC for that, for having no KYC and facilitating for potential money laundering happening on Binance allegedly. And not only is CZ stepping down as the CEO and pleading guilty to these violations, of course, due to this, there is that $4.3 billion fine to Binance and also a fine to CZ for these regulations being broken. But at least as of right now, there's not a lot of detail around when those payments are actually due or if they could be extended over a period of time. And so, of course, as more news comes to light about this situation, I will be covering it in real time on my Twitter and also updates here on YouTube. And now, obviously, with negative news like this around Binance specifically, there would be expected withdrawals happening from Binance, which is to be expected with news like this. And over the last one day, Binance customers have basically withdrawn over 1 billion US dollars worth of crypto from the exchange. But keep in mind, even though that seems like quite a large amount of withdrawals over the last one day, there were actually even more withdrawals than that when the FTX collapse were happening from Binance. And of course, Binance did facilitate all of those withdrawals back then. And on top of that, this is just around one and a half billion dollars worth of withdrawals over the last one day. And Binance customer deposits are still sitting at approximately 60 plus billion US dollars. And so compared to the amount of money still on Binance, one to two billion isn't actually that massive when you're talking about an exchange as large as Binance. But as always, as the saying goes in crypto, not your keys, not your coins. So if you have your entire life savings sitting on Binance, then personally, if I was in that situation, I'd be moving a lot of that off the exchange, whether the exchange is safe or not. Because ultimately, if you have your money trusted with someone else, like an exchange or even a bank, of course, you have to actually ask permission from that party if you want to access your own money. But obviously, if you have your money or savings in self-custody, for example, having physical cash or having cold storage crypto, like crypto in a cold storage device where only you have the private key, obviously you do not need to ask permission from anyone to move that money. You have access to that money and only you. And now obviously with the US government going after Binance and CZ, of course, this is helping other exchanges potentially grow and gain market share. And obviously the biggest exchange in the US is of course Coinbase. And the 
the reason why Coinbase is quite important to the US government, especially as of recent, is all to do with the Bitcoin ETFs pending approval. Because as we all know, major players like BlackRock are filing for spot Bitcoin ETFs. These spot Bitcoin ETFs have already been filed with the SEC. We're basically just waiting for approval. And once these ETFs get approved, for example, once this BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF gets approved, the custodian for the Bitcoin backing that ETF for the BlackRock ETF will be Coinbase, which basically means BlackRock will be trusting Coinbase to hold their Bitcoin on their behalf. And now who would stand to benefit if Coinbase gets extra business like through these ETFs, for example, as the custodian, or who would stand to benefit from a rise in Coinbase market share against the rest of the crypto market if Binance is getting attacked right now from the US government? Well, let's take a look at Coinbase largest shareholders. Of course, in this list of larger shareholders who owns Coinbase, BlackRock is one of the largest shareholders of Coinbase. And another one of the largest shareholders is, of course, ARK Investment. And of course, ARK Invest has also filed for a spot Bitcoin ETF with the SEC. And as we can see in this official filing with the SEC, of course, ARK Invest also is labeling Coinbase custody as their official custodian to hold the Bitcoin for the spot Bitcoin ETF on their behalf. This is for the ARK spot Bitcoin ETF. And so essentially with these pending spot Bitcoin ETFs, Coinbase is looking to gain a lot of business. And remember the top shareholders of Coinbase, the ones to stand to benefit from all of this are of course BlackRock and ARK Invest, the ones actually submitting or filing for the spot Bitcoin ETFs. And the reason why the US government needs to kind of get Binance out of the picture is simply to do with how massive Binance is compared to all of the other exchanges. For example, simply taking a look at the spot trade volume over the last one day on Binance, the trade volume is over $14 billion compared to Coinbase around two and a half billion. And so essentially the majority of Bitcoin's price discovery is happening on Binance. Basically Binance essentially controls a lot of where Bitcoin's price actually comes from. And of course, Binance is not a US company. They are based definitely outside of the US. And so potentially the spot Bitcoin ETFs may not get approved until the US government basically starts attacking Binance more to get rid of its major market share because basically if Coinbase gains in market share in these exchanges then that gives more power essentially to the US because once again Coinbase is based in the US which means the US government can regulate Coinbase at any time and once again some of the biggest owners of Coinbase that are pushing to get Coinbase higher in the market share in crypto are BlackRock and ARK Invest and once again those are two of the major companies filing for spot Bitcoin ETFs and so basically this was a giant giant chess move by the US government and it doesn't end there. The US government basically killed two birds with one stone because not only is this potentially attacking Binance and of course fining Binance billions of dollars, of course this is also in the process getting rid of CZ out of the CEO position and basically they're replacing CZ with this new guy Richard Teng and if you take a look at the World Economic Forum website, Richard Teng is listed on their website. And I won't be going too much into detail about the World Economic Forum and all of that in this video, but basically the World Economic Forum are huge advocates for CBDCs. And in case you don't know what CBDCs are, they're basically central bank digital currencies. So basically digital currencies issued directly from central banks and governments. And so essentially with CBDCs, governments and central banks can see absolutely everything that you're buying and selling with your money. They can freeze your money at any time. They can make your money expire. They can add interest rates or negative interest rates to your money and all of the above. And so once again, this was basically a giant chess move by the US government, getting rid of CZ as the CEO of Binance and getting in this new guy into the position. And at the same time as that, finding Binance billions of dollars, resulting in a bit of withdrawals happening over the last one day, which could ultimately, at least in the short term, damage Binance's business and potentially result in Coinbase gaining market share, which can help with the spot Bitcoin ETFs, which could be bullish for Bitcoin later on, of course, if these ETFs get approved. But ultimately, this would lead to companies like BlackRock profiting way more rather than other companies like Binance. But anyway, getting into the Bitcoin chart, this is on the weekly Bitcoin chart. And over the last one day, not a lot has changed on this chart. Of course, we're still running into that major area of resistance sitting in between around 36K to 38K. And technically speaking, even though we're running into that resistance and struggling in the short term in the price of Bitcoin, we're still technically within the much larger bullish trend here on the weekly timeframe. And if you're taking a look at the daily Bitcoin charts, of course, we still
still technically have this bearish divergence on the daily time frame, which is currently active. And so like I've been saying recently on the channel, I expect mostly choppy sideways price action as one of the most common outcomes from a bearish divergence. And in case you missed my recent videos here on the channel, the reason why I'm not necessarily expecting a significant pullback, at least as of right now, despite this bearish divergence currently being active, is simply to do with the DXY or US dollar index dumping as of right now, which is actually a bullish sign. And so ultimately, this is resulting in a lot of choppy sideways price action here on the daily time frame in the somewhat short term for the price of Bitcoin. And if you're zooming into the eight hour Bitcoin chart, obviously we're still technically within this short term bullish trend forming higher lows and higher highs in this ascending parallel channel. And over the last one day, we actually saw a perfect bounce from this exact line of support, which is sitting at approximately 35.7K. And this center line right here could act as a bit of short term resistance at around 37.1 to 37.2K. But above that, we have some more resistance up here at around 38.5K. And once again, the eight hour Bitcoin RSI is strongly diverging away from the price action, which is basically telling us that we do to see mostly choppy sideways price action in the short term, which obviously, as I've been talking about here on the channel, is playing out as expected. But anyway, now getting into the Ethereum part of this video, this is on the weekly ETH to US dollar chart. And right now, we are actually running into, once again, this area of resistance sitting in between around $2,000 to $2,150. And so obviously, at least for now, we're still forming this giant ascending triangle pattern, which is technically a bullish pattern, but it only actually confirms if we see a confirmed breakout above around 2150. And if you're zooming into the daily time frame, of course, over the last one day, we have seen a decent bounce back to the upside from that short term drop. And of course, once again, as I've mentioned over and over again recently on the channel, we are mostly due to see a lot of choppy sideways price action here in the somewhat short term on the daily time frame, which is once again playing out as expected. And this is mostly due to the fact that we have very low momentum as of right now here in the price oscillators. And so this is basically resulting in the price of ETH not really trending strongly in one direction or another and just chopping around sideways. But believe it or not, you can make a lot of money very easily in choppy sideways price action just like this. And if you want to know how to do that, then stick around to the end of this video to find out more. But first, taking a look at the eight hour ETH to your dollar chart. And technically speaking, we still have this hidden bullish divergence, which is still currently active. Because obviously over the last one to two days or so, we did see a short term dip to the downside, but we did not actually break below this low, which was sitting at around 1920 approximately. And so in order to actually invalidate this specific hidden bullish divergence, we need to see a confirmed break back below that low at around 1920. But even in that scenario, if we actually invalidate this hidden bullish divergence, but still form a higher low above around 1.8K, then the RSI on the eight hour time frame could still be sitting in lower lows, which could still be a new hidden bullish divergence. And so in order to invalidate any chance of a hidden bullish divergence forming again on the eight hour time frame, at least here in the short term, we would need to see a confirmed break back below around 1.8K in order to flip much more bearish again in the short term. But speaking of the short term, zooming into the four hour ETH to US dollar chart. And right now the price of ETH is very close to confirming a potential breakout above this descending line of resistance, which is sitting at around 2030 approximately. But at least for now, we still actually need to see some more candle closes above 2030, above this line of resistance. And ideally, if we actually saw a retest of that level, flipping it into support, that would be even better. But it is important to mention we don't actually need to see a retest. Sometimes we just break out and continue going up. It's just if we do end up seeing a retest, we can be more confident in the breakout to the upside. But at least for now, that potential breakout is not yet confirmed. But if we do end up confirming the breakout for this descending broadening wedge pattern, then the initial price target for this pattern would be sitting at this high at around 2130. And the secondary price target for this pattern would be sitting at approximately 2260. And so from the point of the breakout, we're talking about nearly around an 11% move to the upside if we actually confirm this breakout to the upside to the full price target or to the first price target from the point of the breakout, we're talking around a 5% move to the upside. And just quickly taking a look at the four hour Solana to US dollar chart. Of course, over the last one day, we have seen a bit of a short term bounce back to the upside, which could be a possible retest of this previous line of support. And this line is sitting at approximately 
$55 to $56. And so in order to actually invalidate this break to the downside and invalidate this bearish pattern, we need to see a confirmed breakout in the price of Solana back above around $56. But either way, whether you think the price is going further to the downside, back to the upside, or simply going to chop around sideways, you can make money from crypto in either of those scenarios by watching these videos popping up right here on your screen. The video in the top left shows you how to make money if the price is bullish or bearish using AI, and the video in the bottom left is the one you need to see because that shows you how you can easily profit from choppy sideways price action. But anyway, that is everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video.